Hey, Sun Devil fans, Sandy Charles here for DevilsDigest.com, and I'm joined by our publisher, Hoda Reno. We are here breaking down this weekend's game. ASU has another home game this Friday against Sacramento State. Now, Hoda, it's easy, even in NFL and college, to get excited and maybe overreact over week one results, but what are some things ASU fans can get excited about, but also what are some things ASU still needs to work on? Well, I'm going to start with a group that I usually uh, don't start right off the bat with, and that's special teams. And obviously, first and foremost, we're talking about punter uh, M Michael Tucker established a single a, a single game average, uh, 63 yards uh, with with his five punts, and uh, that definitely helped the defense to be as dominant as as they were. But uh, I think that's something that really can cannot be overlooked. No, I'm not expecting Michael Turk to average over 60 yards each and every game from here on out, but to feel that. Realistically, he can average maybe around 50 yards every game. Uh, that, that, that is something that's definitely within his grasp. And if that can really be established uh, for, the, for the rest of the season, that's a huge advantage for the, for the Arizona State defense, who I felt uh, was, very, was very dominant anyway. Yes, they dominated a caliber of opponent they should have dominated. But uh, holding them to seven points, holding them to 200 yards of offense, I think is definitely uh, a positive sign for this Arizona State defense, something to get excited about. Now, staying with special teams, I think that the fact that your backup kicker, uh, uh, Christian Zendayas was able to convert on, on all three field goals on a night where the offense wasn't really c clicking on all cylinders for, for 60 minutes, uh, I, I think is a, a definitely, definitely a huge, huge uh, area uh, to, to be uh, excited about. At this point right now, we don't know if Brandon Reese will or will not uh, play on Friday. So if Christian Zendayas is, is uh, called upon uh, to uh, kick, kick, kick the field goals, I think uh, that is something that the coaches and the fans probably alike uh, would, feel, would feel confident with. Uh, Looking at the offense, uh, I think you still have to be very impressed with what Jaden Daniels was able to do, a true freshman, and obviously in his first start ever uh, for Arizona State, passing for 284 yards, two passing touchdowns, rushing for another one. But like we talked about in the post game, the fact that he really was under duress, he was sacked five times. There were a lot of other times where he had to really run out of the pocket, not by design, but out of necessity. And to still keep his composure and not have any turnovers and really be generally sound with his decision making, I think that's a huge positive uh, to take out of the game. And the last positive I'll talk about is, is Brandon Ayuk. The whole entire offseason we heard about, can he replace Nikhil Harry? Can he fill, uh, fill, the, fill those big shoes? Now, like you said, it's easy to get, to get uh, overreactive after week one, but the fact of the matter is, after week one, uh, Brandon Ayuk did establish a career, 140 yards receiving. Did have a 77-yard uh, touchdown run, which looked carbon copy of all the touchdowns and runs we, we saw from Nikhil Harry the last three years. So uh, that is definitely, uh, I think, another in, in, in encouraging sign. And obviously, when you talk about a true freshman uh, quarterback, Jenny Daniels, looking for that go-to guy, I think Brandon Ayuk, again, it's only week one, but established himself that he could be uh, that uh, go-to guy for Jaden Daniels and the Arizona State offense. Now, if we look at areas of concern, as I mentioned, the five sacks, giving up by, by the offensive line. Uh, that is something that definitely needs to be cleaned up. When coaches talk about uh, the most improvement taking, uh, taking place from week one to week two, uh, I'm sure fans really hope this applies to the Arizona State offensive line. Now, granted, uh, true freshman uh, Donovan, uh, Donovan West uh, was only named the starter uh, four days before, uh, before the season opener. You had a redshirt freshman uh, right by his side, uh, Jared Bell, at, at right guard. So there's definitely some cohesiveness and chemistry issues that need to be figured out by the offensive line. And now they have that one game under their belt. Uh, that, that is something they can look to, uh, to, to really shore up. And I also say, going back to special teams, I think uh, the coverage units uh, were not really um, all that great, especially in, in, in kickoff coverage. Again, Brandon Reese being out and having uh, the, a true freshman Josh Plaster uh, play instead of him that definitely uh, took, took its toll on the special teams. Now, nothing that really hurt Arizona State against a team like Kent State, but, but definitely down the road is something you want to look out for. Overall, I think the positives did, did uh, outweigh the negatives for Arizona State, but there's definitely some shortcomings that the Sun Devils need to fix and has to start uh, week two against Sacramento State. Now, it's obviously easy to overlook an FCS opponent like Sacramento State, especially on paper, since they're worse than Kent State, whom ASU took on last week. But Sacramento State put up 77 points last week. What do you think ASU's defense is going to do after seeing that? Well, on the one hand, I can understand you can take those 77 points with, with a grain of salt because it was against an NAIA opponent, which is not Division I school, obviously, in, 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 in Southern Oregon. 
So, yeah, 77 points, but who did you play? I get mm -hmm. that fact. But at the end of the day, it is 77 points. And that shows that your offense in week one was clicking on all cylinders. And look, every team around the country, no matter what level you're at, is not really sure what the identity of the team is going to be in week one. How well can they play? Can all the things that were worrisome in preseason practice reveal their ugly head in week one? But you look at Sacramento State, and right now they got confidence, they got swagger, and, and, and really for good reasons. I, I mean, putting up 77 points against no, any opponent, no matter what the level of opponent is, is, is impressive. So they definitely have Arizona State's attention. Now, one thing that really hasn't been talked about a lot is that I think there's a really interesting chess match going on right now because Troy Taylor, the head coach for Sacramento State, was the offensive coordinator for Utah last, last, last year. Yes, it was a game that Arizona State dominated 38-20, uh, to 20, but... Offensive, uh, offensive coaches trying to figure out the 3-3-5 that Danny Gonzalez, ASU's defensive coordinator, is employing definitely now have more experience under their belt dealing with that scheme because they actually played a game. I mean, you can watch film until your eyes bleed, but you'll never fully understand the scheme and the strength and weaknesses of the, your opponent until you actually play them on, on a Saturday. So Troy Taylor knows how to attack the 3-3-5 defense. Now, he didn't do it all, all great of a job last November, but now he's much more knowledgeable than he was prior to that contest. Now, obviously, that uh, uh, f familiarity goes, goes both ways because Danny Gonzalez is also familiar with what Troy Taylor did at Utah, what he's going to try to do with Sacramento State. And really, when Sacramento State put up 77 points, that playbook was not just cracked a little bit. It was wide open. They, they showed a lot. You can't run vanilla play after vanilla play and, and, and still score 77 points. So Arizona State's uh, defense knows that they're going to uh, face, much like I said, a high-tempo offense that's probably going to look, look, look really to establish themselves uh, in the air and, and open up the run game that way. So I think in a good way, it is, it is uh, positive that Sacramento State was able to be impressive as they were because if the Arizona State defense was even thinking about overlooking them, and which I really don't think they were anyway, they definitely have their attention right now. It's really, it was really going to be an interesting matchup. And like I said, uh, the head coach of um, Sacramento State being familiar with Danny Gonzalez and vice versa based on the meeting last year, I think adds another very interesting uh, chess match element, if you will, to this contest. Now let's take it to the other side of the ball. ASU's offense only put up 30 points last week, although they had 455 total yards of offense. What does this offense need to do to be explosive this weekend? Well, I don't mean to harp on the, on the play of the offensive line, but I feel if they can really cut down the sacks and really may have Jaden Daniels be that much more comfortable in the pocket, that's going to create a, a positive domino effect that's really going to re resonate with, with that entire side of the ball. And you'll see Arizona State uh, backing up, if you will, uh, a uh, impressive uh, yardage performance with that, with with, uh, with actual points on the board. Uh, I, I mean, you go back to Jenny Daniels and how cool, calm, and composed he was, still being sacked five times, and like I said, sometimes running for his life on, on other downs. Just imagine Jenny Daniels with a well-established pocket. I mean, I mean the, the weapons are there. You know, Benjamin, Brandon Ayuk, uh, Frank, Frank Darby, Kyle Williams. If you give Jaden Daniels more time to operate, as impressive as that week one performance was, I think Jaden Daniels can surpass that and surpass that in a, in a, in a, very, in a very resounding fashion. So that really, really what, what needs to be happening and it needs to happen with the Arizona State offense. I feel that overall, um, you know, the running game was doing okay, but I think uh, pass protection was a, bigger, a much bigger issue than run blocking for the Arizona State offensive line. But um, I really didn't see a whole lot to fix uh, from that side of the ball aside from the offensive line. So, again, if the offensive line can really make that big jump that coaches are expecting them to make from week one to week two, everything is really going to fall in place for, the, for, the, for this Arizona State offense, which, again, uh, they the put up the yardage, like you said. They just, they just really need, need to back it up with more points. It was great to see a backup kicker in Christians and Diaz be three or three field goals, but uh, obviously uh, Rob Likens would like all those field goals to be touchdowns on Friday night. How do you see this game unfolding, and how important is this game to have a great matchup as they prepare for next week heading for a big game against Michigan State? Yeah, I mean, Michigan State, that's like Arizona State, is playing those uh, gimme, gimme games right now, preparing them for those matchups the next week. And I know Arizona State is not overlooking uh, uh, Sacramento State by, by any means, but, but again, the Michigan State game is definitely, definitely in the back of their head. And they want to have, have a stronger performance uh, th than they did. And really, Michigan State, if you hear the um, comments there from East Lansing after their uh, for the first game, um, they're not really uh, too uh, pleased with how they played. So they also want to have a good showing uh, in, in their own right. But um, Arizona State 
if they can really clean up um, everything that I mentioned in terms of deficiencies, uh, and I, I think that, um, that they definitely come in with more confidence to a game that's going to be definitely one of the most challenging contests they're going to have the entire 2019 season. Um, I predict Arizona State uh, to win this game uh, for 45 to 17. So uh, maybe maybe giving up a, l a little more defensively because I think Sacramento State, even though they're a low-level opponent than Kent State was, uh, definitely more capable offensively. It looks like at least based on what we saw in Week One. But uh, I think Arizona State um, on, on offense is able to put uh, more points on the board. Like I said, back up those offensive yards with with, with, some, with some output in terms of in terms of point out, but I'm sorry. So I think Arizona State uh, is going to make an improvement, and I think that overall, you'll probably feel better about the Sun Devils after week two than you did after week one, heading in, in, heading into a very, very uh, tough uh, environment in East Lansing next week. But um, overall, I think uh, I think Arizona State uh, will be able to show the improvement that everyone wants to see from, from week one to week two, and really that, that's, that's imperative for uh, this team uh, to, to be a contender in the Pac-12 South, which I feel that, that, that they can be. But uh, Arizona State uh, winning this game 45-17. Uh, to 17. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hode. Keep it locked into DevilsDigest.com for all of our pregame and postgame coverage and, of course, live throughout the game on Friday. For Hode Urbino, I'm Sandy Charles. Keep it locked into DevilsDigest.com.